me again here at Jess. Um, just wanted to thank you and welcome you to my going live video. I'm, this is so fun and I'm at a really pretty place today. Uh, I'm in Islip, New York and I have to show you this before they swim away. Look at these beautiful swans and geese in the water and I hope you can see those. So pretty. I'm just thrilled to be here. Thanks for joining. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a little plein air and um, I've got my canvas here ready. It's not toned or anything, but um, that's okay. And then I'm going to do this scene in front of me. I kind of, I like how the bank is coming down into the water. I hope you can hear me because there's a lot of noise going on. Look at this building here too. I'm at, a, I'm at the Arts Council and if I had more than an hour, <laughs> I'd love to do that, but I try to keep it under an hour. Hey Allie! Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in because this is a really beautiful scene and there's a lot of complexity going on. Um, but before I do that, I wanna show you my palette because I always get asked. <laughs> All right, so let's see, let me turn this this way. Um, palette, palette, there we go. Um, okay, so again, I have titanium white and I put out some Naples yellow today. Um, Cad yellow pale, yellow ochre, Cad red medium, Burnt Sienna, um, that's my phthalo green down in there in the shadow. I have ultramarine blue, and hey dad! <laughs> and then um, alizarin permanent. So that's what I'm working with today, just a really limited palette, primary colors. Um, okay, and then, so before I get started, I also did um, a little thumbnail sketch because I like to have sort of an idea of where I'm going with what I'm doing. Um, Thanks, thank you guys for joining. It's so fun to have you here. And in fact, this actually took me a little while to do a thumbnail sketch because we're to London. <laughs> Can you believe how nice it is? It's like I'm in just a light shirt. Uh, okay, so these are my thumbnail sketches. And I mentioned in my last plein air video that I, I like to do thumbnails because I can work out um, what I'm doing. And knowing that this is an eight by 10 uh, canvas, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this little gadget. Um, this was recommended to me by uh, Skip Wickham in one of his workshops. It's a, it's a view catcher. I used to call them view finders, but I believe that's a toy. Uh, <laughs> so this is a view catcher. And if you got, get one of these, you can look on the sides here, on each side, there are different sizes. And those give you the exact ratio of whatever you're working on. And then it's, they're always just this neutral gray so that you can um, match your colors better. Looking through the little hole there. And um, so what I do with mine is I find the little mark that says eight by 10 and I draw my little square right on here, just like that. So I have the exact ratio of what I'm working on. Um, so then I'm done with that. You can also use it to look at your view and help you kind of isolate things that way. So these are handy if you don't have one, they're not very expensive. You can always make one, but whatever. Anyway, so here's my thumbnail sketches. And I'll show you what I was thinking of when I came up with these. What I really liked about my scene was this bank, um, the way that the mud is kind of just, see right there? I like that. And I also like the colors of the bush right there. So, and you know, the thing about plein air is you can get overwhelmed by all the really pretty things to look at. So anyway, so I, I did these three little drawings, zooming in on, I did the bit, one more where it was a broader scene and then I zoomed in a little more and then I zoomed in a lot on the bank. And I might do this one later, but for now, I think I'm gonna do this one. What I don't like about it though, is that I put the tree right in the middle. So instead of redoing the whole thing, I'm just gonna, um, just gonna kind of fix it on my canvas here. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in. I leave my uh, picture out so that I can see it and kind of use that as reference. So I have my paper towel. All set. And I, I didn't tell my canvas today. Um, I just, I didn't have it. Is it not working? I hope it's working. Um, it says I have coverage. If you guys can't see me or hear me, can you just say something? Um, as far as I know, I have good cell reception. Drawing it in place, referring again to my uh, thumbnail too. I can't believe all these swans. 
Let them. <laughs> All right, thanks. Can you guys see it? Okay, great, thank you. Now, I don't want to run my composition way into the corner, of course. Thinking about this bank, how it comes around. I love this shape. It's really, it's like organic, beautiful. I don't think I'm going to do the trees falling into the water because it's a little distracting. Just working on this going way back. I love how um, the light filters through all these colors and it's... Thanks, Ben! Um, it just has a softer, more atmospheric look over there and I was so excited to find this place um, so I can get some of that bright color and talk about that. So I'm kind of just thinking that my bush, this big bush is going to go here. Um, careful not to put that tree in the middle, like I made that mistake. Got these grasses over here. This is a scene that I could probably take way, way too long on, but I'm going to try to just keep it really simple and keep this at a reasonable time. So again, um, this is kind of like a two-thirds that I've divided my canvas. Just thinking uh, my tree line's gonna be about over here where the trees meet the sky. It's really not gonna be about too much of the sky today. Um, so, mm, hope that you can see that, good. quickly. Thanks for uh, coming in. Great. Okay, good. Thank you for letting me know. I always worry that there's a cell reception problem. <laughs> so, um, and I mentioned before uh, in just different blogs and different videos to have a concept or have an idea of what it is that you really want to say in your painting. Don't just paint the picture because it's pretty, um, but have, you know, a vision, sort of a concept. And so in this case, I love the light coming through. Some days you get light, some days you don't. Um, so I really want to show this movement of light and how it goes back into just non, sort of an atmospheric look over there. So I'm gonna get jumping right into some color. And um, I mentioned this brush last time. Um, I just bought these, this one, it's, a, it's called Grey Matters, and these are made specifically for plein air painters because they, don't, they have sort of a dull uh, grey feral, so the sun doesn't reflect on it and blind you. It's kind of cool. Uh, so I'm still using um, turpentine as I'm starting to lay down just some thin little washes of color. Sorry, I've got this thing on here. And I'm just kind of putting spots of this um, yellow ochre and cad yellow just to kind of give me an idea of um, like an underpainting in a way. I'm like, it's like I'm toning the canvas. And I'm doing this first because I want it to sort of glow and I won't put paint very thickly on this area. So just taking a little bit of um, cad red and some burnt sienna, just to kind of help give me some of that fall glowing color as it's going on in here. Okay, also gonna, <laughs> thank you. Also gonna uh, do a little bit of scumbling of the green in there. So I'm taking just the, um, ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. Nothing really vibrant right now. It's kind of more of a shadow tone. And again, I'm just thinking about these, this atmosphere over here, trying not to get those um, values way over there too contrasty. Got 
gotta see these swans. You see those? I hope you can see them. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I feel so lucky to be in this place. It's gorgeous. <laughs> As long as they don't come after me. <laughs> Do swans charge? I don't know. So I'm keeping my brushwork really loose and just soft and, and um, more or less suggested. Pretty soon I'm going to start uh, laying in thicker color and working from the background forward. For now, just getting some of this in. Mm -hmm. It's a great week. It is. It's beautiful out. Enjoy the weather. I am. Thank you. Thanks. It is lovely. I'm so happy to be here. And with all this wildlife. So cool. <laughs> I think I'm crooked a little bit here. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to work from the background forward now, um, and in this case I'm just going to do the sky, and I'm going to add, um, it's a little bit colder today, so I'm going to use some little bit more oil, but I'm just using, oops, not that one, white and ultramarine blue, and a teensy bit, um, <laughs> good things, um, teeny bit of phthalo green to warm up that sky right down here. And then I'm just laying down just nice thick pieces of paint. Using a little bit more oil just to help it kind of flow because it's kind of, it gets, when it gets colder out, it gets a little stiff. I don't have much sky, so I'm not really going to worry about that dome like effect in the sky. Getting that down quickly. But I'm thinking about the um, the skyline of the trees. If you can see them way over there, see how they have a interesting shape. You can try to get that. And I can always lose some of that too. I'm happy with that. Might just flick in a cloud or two. Uh, I wanted to talk about last time, um, okay, <laughs> thank you, Don, um, painting clouds and um, things like that. It, one thing I found, um, I mean, you can study painting clouds and you can study all the different kinds of clouds and, and all of that, but half the battle is in your mind. And if you think light, fluffy, airy, wispy while you're painting it, you have a tendency to, to kind of capture more of that soft edge and feeling of weightlessness than if than like a heavy heavy cotton ball or something just thinking it's a psychological thing but just try to think light and wispy and, and just sort of suggest I don't think those are lemon trees no no we don't have lemon trees um, in Long Island <laughs> So I also want to be careful not to dot my clouds, like dit, dit, dit. so just, if they're there, they're there, if they're not, whatever, they're just, I'm just going to suggest them a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to get those trees in back there. I think that you can see that. We do, yes, you do have lemon trees in Tuscany. I can't wait to see them. So 
I'm taking some yellow ochre, some ultramarine blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. I think that there's some white or Naples yellow on my brush, um, just to try to get some of this tone back in here. So these trees. Letting some of that underpainting that I just did show through, because I don't want to completely bury that. Also trying to maintain that feeling of the atmosphere. I don't want to cover it with really strong, thick, dark paint, which would be easy to do because it, when you zero in on something, um, you know, laser vision, you can see all those colors and details and branches and everything, but you have to look sort of peripherally at something. Um, so in this case, I want the painting to be about this foreground. So I'm gonna look at this, and while I'm looking at that over there, I'm going to just look peripherally at the background and then whatever I see out of the corner of my eye that's how I'm going to try to paint it on here and I do the same thing with my still lifes in the studio I'll just look at my center of interest and just look peripherally at everything else and that's one of the guidelines I use to helping me with edges and um, knowing how to paint things that are supposed to stay in the background As I get um, these trees closer to the sky, I'm incorporating a little bit of that sky color. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Marlene. Um, incorporating some of that sky color into that tree color and just lightly glazing the two so that it looks like the tree is one with the sky instead of cut out. And I, I, I vary my brushwork this way and that way just to give it, to break it up and give it a little bit of interest instead of just doing one direction. I love seagulls. <laughs> See if you're watching in Florida. Oh, good. Thanks for joining. I do think that these plein air videos are so fun. Um, I'll do them as long as we have decent weather, but um, I'll miss them in, in the winter. <laughs> okay. So again, um, I'm keeping all my background colors. Oh, thank you, Stanley. Good morning, Linda. Um, I'm keeping all my background colors a little more muted because again, it's just atmosphere that I'm trying to think about back here. Loose brushwork. Um, I'll sneak in a few uh, bright pockets of colors. Nothing. Nothing really screaming at you, just, just keeping it quiet. <laughs> so nice of you guys to join. <laughs> back there. I keep wanting to make it brighter than I than I should. So just it's a tendency. We all have it. <laughs> really loose. which one I want to be more pre uh, predominant. Uh, 
and obviously I want this one because I think it would leave the eye in a little more interesting that way. So that being the case, that side over there is going to get a little bit more um, just downplay. I'm going to tone it down a little. Put more sky in. Let's push it back. a nice skull, uh, fall sky. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm feeling good about that background. I think I'm going to work on bringing it in a little bit more and some of that water. Um, getting some ultramarine blue, little green, little burnt sienna. I'm using the green with the burnt sienna um, because it'll make a nice rich dark. Because uh, right down here, right at here at the shoreline, there's a nice um, of a dark accent there. I don't want to make it too dark though because um, this is going to be really dark down here so I want to make sure that this doesn't compete with that. Okay, so that's where I'm going with that. I like that. Now I don't have a perfect reflection of, so maybe next time you could show more of the canvas. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. The hard part is getting it close enough and then, um, sorry, <laughs> we're getting real close, is getting, uh, and then I can still talk and stuff. Is that maybe a little bit better? Um, my paper towel's in the way. How's that, Teresa? <laughs> Good? I don't know. We'll see. It, I'm in the shade here too, so it's not going to really pick up much of the, um, the genuine color. Thanks anyway. <laughs> um, all right, so what was I saying? Oh, I was saying that I don't, if you look at my, um, if you look at my uh, tone here, I don't have, excuse me, the water, I do not have a, a nice reflection, like a, per, well, it's, I like the reflection, but it's not like a mirror image. Um, so I'm just gonna obviously not paint what I don't see. Just a nice little, it's kind of like I took a yellow ochre and sort of glazed it down. Sorry, that's like, I feel like I'm on top of the camera. <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty much uh, just an ultramarine blue and white water. So I'm taking a lot of water, sorry, white with the ultramarine blue. And I am going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in it. Um, just to help keep that not so garish blue and white, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like that. I don't want any of these uh, edges or lines back here to be really sharp either because um, your eye will be drawn to sharp edges and contrast. So since that is just going to help support what I have going on in here, I'm going to keep it quiet. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, someone just sent me a text uh, and it showed up on my little screen. They are um, at the Arboretum looking for me. I'm not at the Arboretum. Uh, if you're tuning into this live feed, I'm over in Islip at a park. Um, I wasn't getting any cell reception there, so I left. Sorry. If you're looking to paint with me, I'm way over here at the background sounds. <laughs> Good. Thank you. I, I'm glad you like the background sounds because I'm worried there's I hear trains and jackhammers and whatever. So <laughs> thank you. So as the water moves closer to me, um, just picking up some more of that ultramarine blue. And 
Um, as the water is closer to the shore, there's a lot more of the. Um, <laughs> thank you. There's a lot more of the yellow ochre towards the waterline, shoreline. And yellow ochre, burnt sienna, with the ultramarine blue. I love seagulls. They're so pretty. <laughs> Here. just kind of gives it more of that earth tone real feeling since I have this color on my brush I really like it um, right in here and this is a linen canvas that I'm using I just I prefer painting on linen the other day I was painting on um, cotton and it just drives me crazy because it doesn't come off the paint does not come off the brush the same uh, as it does on linen beautiful little jewel tones of color and I don't mix them up super thoroughly um, I, I let some of the color swirl on the painting itself I just think it's more interesting that way I'm keeping a close eye on these swans they're right here and they're like honking at me and stuff you see that they're so pretty sorry I'm easily distracted <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All I'm doing here is just kind of picking up some of this um, little spots of uh, like a really nice ultramarine blue and white, just some pure color in there. One thing I don't want to do with brushwork is to do this, where I sweep it back and forth. Never ever want to do that. Just lay down a um, piece of color like that. If you don't like it, adjust the color. Mix it, see how you can uh, just, you just lay down pieces of paint this way and um, it makes it much, much more interesting to look at. Thank you guys for joining. All right, I'm gonna get some clean white in here, just little spots and pockets of color. Thank you guys for sharing. That's really nice. So I'm squinting down at the water too when I look at it just to see some of those um, more unified value tones. Altering my brushwork. I don't know how I got yellow ochre up in there. Put a swan in your painting you know i probably will um they're so pretty i don't know if you can see them they're all walking on the shore over here the geese and seagulls and stuff <laughs> sorry i don't speak spanish uh something about brazil rio de janeiro thank you for joining Again, um also i mean the water is fun and i'm enjoying it but you have to always bear in mind what the painting is about and right now it's not so much about the water even though I like it uh, just trying to get it down because I want it about this little shoreline muddy bank here so just getting them doo -doo 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 -doo. That, I will work on that later a little bit all right Let's see. this is okay <laughs> So now I'm um, thinking about how this piece of land comes down around this way and comes in closer. And there's a clump of grasses over here. Yeah, the seagulls. So I am, um, I'm on the south side of Long Island, uh, right near um, Babylon, which is right, right on the lower portion of Long Island. Getting a little bit more 
paint in there. Just pieces of color, just laying down pieces of paint. That's all, all there really is to it is just little chunks. I think I'm going to get um, some of this. A little bit of that phthalo green mixed with a little bit of um, cad yellow gives you a really brilliant bright green and you can add a little bit uh, a darker tone to that just to create the shadows of this tree here. Nick it. <laughs> well, thank you, Brad. I always think that these little demos I do look so rough, and, and I wish that they could be more polished, but oh well. <laughs> I enjoy sharing them afterwards, even though I think that it looks so rough. Um, it's all fun. Okay, moving around towards this way. Get some of that um, bank over there. I like to think of these as being like still lifes, and I can, um, when I do a still life, I think about like that, that back of the table where, it, um, if my if my setup is here, and it's way back there, and it comes forward this way. That's what I'm thinking about right here. This is the back part of my still life, and it's going to come forward. So to do that, I'm going to keep these edges soft. I'm going to make it cooler tone. And then um, as I get closer, I'm going to use more contrast, more paint. Um, yeah. Still going to use more paint um, back there because right here, because it's closer than that. Um, just thinking about that progression as it moves forward. and I'm keeping my brushwork horizontal. closer I'll add more um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, just to warm it up and make it more interesting as it approaches. You can see that a little bit closer. Um, I'm not going to put this big tree in that I have right there. Uh, I just think that it's it, well, maybe, I, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I do have in my little thumbnail one here, so I think I'm gonna do that one. This is all pretty much in shadow down here. A bit more oil. And again, all I'm using for materials is um, just the paints that I showed you at the beginning. And then I use the Gamsol to clean my brush um, and linseed oil. That's it. I just keep it really simple. And I'm seeing some of this green. Um, moss on that little hill there and it's so brilliant and beautiful right now I just really want to capture that hmm. right now I'm also going to think about the darkest darks as they're in that bank right here Get some of that exactly where I want it that shape It always helps to anchor the painting when you can put one of those um, passages where it's really nice and dark. 
and it gives you that sense of sculptural like that. So under this bush here too, I have these nice strong shadows and into the water like that. That's so cool. <laughs> One more yellow ochre in this water down here. The yellow ochre that mixes with that blue really just makes it look like water. I love that. Some of that burnt sienna. Is that showing up? I hope so. <laughs> All right, moving forward. In this tree, And um, I did want to talk about trees today because everywhere I was looking were these gorgeous trees. Um, I might just save that for another video because you could just you could talk about trees forever. Each one is like a portrait. And I kind of wiggle and squiggle my brush and, and let the let it sort of just have that really interesting shape to it sort of let it evolve in something organic. It looks cool. <laughs> um, to paint that, I'm just doing uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. As, as my branches get towards the light, the light wraps around the branches and um, they get softer, more uh, lost in the sky. Okay, so I just put that tree in because I want it to be in the background. I'm going to put that bush um, in front of it a little bit more. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad yellow just to get that tree green this bush right here and since this is more or less that's like my star of the show I'm gonna um, make it thicker paint brighter richer colors let some of that glazing underneath just really show through glazing you know what I mean the undertone some yellow ochre in here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining guys. Oh, didn't want that green. At least that tone. Kind of letting it mix with the water a little bit as I'm painting that. And those shadow tones. So one of the things I just really kind of wanted to drive home about painting landscapes, especially in the fall, is um, just ta I'm talking today about selecting your vision and having a vision and then finding and keeping, maintaining that vision while you're painting. Um, it's really just so important that you don't lose sight of that one thing that you really responded to when you uh, found that scene. Going back here, adding some more of this bright white. I'm not going to put the little dock that I see in back there. I just think it's not necessary. 
that's that selectivity that you need to keep in the front of your mind as your painting is. If I put this in, is it going to help um, tell my story or is it going to distract? thinking about that coming this way, moving in towards the viewer. Also thinking too, I want the eye to travel coming in this way and shooting back that way. So I'm gonna work on some of that. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Always keeping uh, my brushwork, since this is a horizontal, plat like a platform, just keeping those brush strokes showing the form that way. I hope that that's showing up on there. Great. And um, you can't really see what I'm mixing down here, but I am just taking like white and Naples yellow to try to get some of this, um, like the sun dappled look in here. Pretty sure there's other colors mixing on my brush and stuff that was on my um, canvas because I paint pretty thick. So I'm just letting them play and mix together and do their thing. I am liking this brush. Um, hi! <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, I didn't really care for this brush last time, but that's because it was getting wet because it was raining. It's, it's a nice um, little hog's hair brush, size 6. Some of this in here. I'm trying to keep that focus of this whole, this whole thing. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, oh! I'm trying on my face. to a place where I'm, I'm, I've got the whole thing covered with paint, I just need to ask myself, all right, according to my little sketch, did I get that overall feeling so far? I liked this one right here. So um, referring to this, I feel that um, this is could read a little bit stronger according to my sketch. Enjoying, oh, thank you, Joanne. <laughs> So that being the case, um, thinking about wanting this to have more impact in here, I'm laying down thicker pieces of paint, a little more oil, um, and thinking about the structure of the land as it goes whoop, like that down into the water. Just pieces of paint. That's a um, really, that someone is back there, uh, that impressionistic approach that I, I like so much too is you just, you, um, you take your impression from the scene. T sorry, I had a phone call. <laughs> it's not the intention to copy it exactly as you see it, but to make your impression of it. And my impression was this beautiful uh, movement of light and that's what I hope to get. <laughs> So in this front passage, I have stronger color. Um, when I look over here at the scene, here, I'll show you again. See how the shadows in the foreground are just kind of like um, neutral, everything's sort of muted. And then if you look further back, they're still pretty neutral. So I'm gonna try to kind of push those a little bit more in, um, in this. Push the color, the vibrancy, um, maybe a little bit more violet. Like I'm just using, sorry, alizarin crimson and um, ultramarine blue, a little purple in there. I'm sorry, no purple, a little bit of white to make it a little bit more purple. That'll give it a feeling of, you know, 
um, shadows from the tree is kind of being cast in this area. And so um, I have that going on here. As it moves towards the background, those uh, tree shadows get more like parallel lines and they get softer and lighter, more blue. Without them becoming, I don't want them to be too distracting. Running late, so you have to start over. <laughs> you can start over. <laughs> I hope it's not too long. I don't know how long I've been going. I didn't bring my watch today. All right, so cleaning that up a little bit, gonna um, <laughs> drop in some more vibrant green of that um, that bank. I'm actually gonna get a little bit smaller brush just so that I can kind of really focus on some of that detail a little bit more. Um, and I just have some, a little bit of oil on my brush. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. To make something uh, really appear bri uh, bright and sunlit, you want the area around it to be a little bit darker. So I'm really going to try to hit this up with some bright, I have white, cad yellow, pale, and a teeny bit of the phthalo green. And again, just keeping my brush strokes nice and horizontal right in here. Trying to get that feeling of moss, shadow. I like that. I like moss. Such a pretty green. Just, I'm, I take it on my brush and I kind of flatten out my mixture and then I scoop up the color onto my brush. So that I can just lay down a piece of paint like that. Um, I'll zoom in. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, I don't know if you can kind of see that. So. I'm gonna put some more of that right over in this area. Maybe add a little bit blue, more blue. way a little bit and further in the background I'm gonna make this a little bit green so it does go back a little and then um, under the bush I'm gonna keep it real shadowed in some of these water uh, little shimmers down here. Oops. Definitely don't want to overwork that water. <laughs>
you must say painting illegally. <laughs> oh, the sirens? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Those rebellious artists. I always worry about that too in a place like this. Am I supposed to pay? Nobody said anything. <laughs> so, having fun. All right. Um, getting closer. Flipping the brush, getting some grassy things in here. Yeah, they're coming to take me away for sure. Probably had it coming. <laughs> All right. Okay, now I'm going to just pop in some of these really bright um, leaves and some of that sparkle in the tree. Just taking some cad yellow and um, Cad yellow pale, a little bit of white. Um, I'll even take some of the um, cad red and mix in with that. <laughs> I love trains. They always just make me think of faraway places. When I was little, there was I could hear the train from a long ways away. Six miles away, I could hear the train at night. It always made me think of going somewhere else just far away. So I could go nuts on these um, little leaves and stuff, but I want to just kind of temper it and keep it under control. Um, taking some cad yellow and some cad red, I'm going to pop in some of these leaves down here. Just kind of massing them in. Um, I'm going to take some alizarin crimson with the cad yellow to lay those in up here. Remember, uh, this area was kind of the star of the show and I really wanted this play of um, vibrancy right here. Just to keep that super interesting right in here. I'm trying not to overdo it because you can. I'm going to pop in some green sparkles. A little bit. Closer. I think I might be just about done here. Um, good for now. Um, just kept it really simple. I'll probably take this back to the studio and work on it a little bit more. Um, I usually do. <laughs> but again, there's my scene. Some of that. And um, this is what I came up with today. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's a little bit rough, but um, I hope that it helped and that you had a good time. I wanted to thank everybody for joining. Thanks so much and see you next Friday. Bye-bye.